Systems optimization is a different way of thinking about engineering. And to think a different way, we often need to understand different words. One of the most important is this term design variable, also sometimes called decision variable. We need to know what the design variables are. And in the simplest terms, they're the things that the engineer has discretion over. In a Cartesian coordinate system, those would be the independent variables. Um, examples would include uh, thickness, for example, of a reactor wall or pavement. They might include uh, diameter, like of a pipe. They could include um, retention time or volume. These are the variables that the engineers use to create a design, hence design variables. They have discretion over the design, at least within the parameters of a feasible solution. Feasible solutions will satisfy the constraints that the engineers work under. Uh, those constraints might be the geometry of the design, how much space they have to work in. They might be the money. So let's distinguish between the independent variables in this coordinate system on, plotted on the x-axis, also called the design or decision variables, and the dependent variables. There can be any number of dependent variables that depend upon the design. One of them could be cost. Uh, another one could be the load. Or another one might be the flow, say, in cubic feet per second. So these are all considerations that the engineers have to keep in mind when choosing a design. Let's take, for example, pavement thickness. A typical way in the United States to measure pavement thickness might be in terms of inches. So our x-axis will be in inches, and there can be all different kinds of pavement applications from a parking lot to an interstate highway. For our purposes, let's say that our scale goes from 0 to 24 inches. What would 0 be? I mean, there's no surface course. We're just running on embankment or so, like a dirt road. but on top of the dirt road, we could place 6, 12, 18, or 24 inches of pavement. The cost of the pavement could be measured in dollars. If we have no pavement, we have no cost. And then after the pavement gets thicker and thicker, well, we could estimate the cost goes up in the form of some linear relationship. The thicker the pavement, the more concrete that we need to bring onto the job site and compact or place, consolidate, the more reinforcing steel we'd need for uh, Portland cement concrete. Uh, in any case, we're going to assume a relationship where the pavement gets thicker and this parameter, the cost, goes up with thicker pavement. And this makes sense. Whereas another dependent uh, variable might be the equivalent vehicle trips. We'll call this the lifetime of the pavement. Trucks, cars go over the pavement and each one wears the pavement out a little bit. The equivalent vehicle trips might also increase in terms of the pavement thickness. And here we don't know what that relationship looks like. It might be subject to diminishing returns, which means it goes up very fast and then slower and slower and slower over time. It might be supralinear, that is, have some sort of economies of scale where it goes up slowly at first and then increases uh, much more quickly, exponentially even. But we're just going to make some relationship, we're in some assumption about the relationship between the equivalent, the lifetime, the equivalent vehicle trips, and the thickness of the pavement. And we'll assume that it looks something like this, which exhibits diminishing returns. Now we understand that there's a difference between the design variable over which we have discretion and these other variables, the ind oh, sorry, the dependent variables that we're designing for, we're also subject to constraints. 
Suppose there's some maximum budget under which we must keep the pavement costs. We'll denote the maximum budget like this. This is a constraint that says we don't have any more money than this line. And therefore, our cost curve cannot exceed the constraint line. That means that the largest possible pavement thicknesses, we've got it worked out on this graph, might be 14 inches. Our thickness, we'll choose the variable x, has to be less than or equal to 14, which is an inequality constraint. Anything less than 14 might be considered feasible. Now the question is, which of all the possible pavements that we could design for is the best one? If the benefit of the pavement is represented by the equivalent vehicle trips, and the cost of the pavement is represented by the straight line that we have to pay for it, then it makes sense that our objective could be to maximize the benefits minus the costs. In that case, we'd have an objective function equals benefits minus costs. By subtracting the cost curve from the benefit curve, we could use calculus or whatever our model is to determine which pavement thickness corresponds to the maximum benefit relative to the cost required to achieve that benefit. So we now have three important vocabulary words that we need to understand. Design variable is that independent variable over which we exercise discretion. The objective function is that function that we use to determine which of the feasible designs is superior. That is, how do we know if one design is better than another? We're going to measure it using the objective, also sometimes called the merit function. And finally, the third word is the constraint. What are those aspects of the problem that we have to live within? That is, which of those equations constrain our design. And it could be for reasons of cost or geometry or time or some other resource. Because we live in a finite world, all of our engineering discretion, that is all of our design variables, are subject to these constraints. And it might be that the constraint is expressed in terms of one of the dependent variables. If that's the case, then it's helpful to use the relationship between the dependent variable that the constraint is expressed in and this equation, the cost equation, so that we can re-express the constraint in terms of our design variable. It's important to understand the difference between the design variables over which you have discretion, the constraints that govern the design, and the objective function the merit by or the worth or how we compare the value of one design to another and decide which design is best.